Hey church, I want to read something for you. This is from 2 Samuel 16 verse 14 and it says, Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and sh sounds of trumpets. So let me give you a little bit of a picture of what's going on here. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant, built as a symbol of God's presence and glory, has been lost and forgotten for some 70 years. It was kept in the house of Abinadab, and David wanted to bring the Ark back to the city of Jerusalem so that everybody would be able to worship the Lord in one place. It was one of his dreams, one of his passions, to have God's people all have a place to worship him and have a covenant with him. And it seemed like every obstacle was being put in place to kind of prevent him from seeing his dream come to a reality. And in fact, for a while, he was concerned that he was never going to be able to make it happen. But finally, that day had arrived. After long months and struggles, the Ark had finally arrived in Jerusalem. And David, in all of his excitement and all of his praise for God, leapt and danced. He didn't care that he could have looked ridiculous. His main concern was to show thanks and worship to him, to God, to the one who blessed David. In fact, he did look a little bit ridiculous. His wife, Michal, um, was really bothered by the fact that David was out there dancing and chastised him. And David said to her, I will become even more undignified than this. It was a circumstance where David was out there and he was dancing and some have said in his underwear which isn't exactly true but he was definitely not in his full regalia he was in humble clothing um, and it was kind of that behavior that a lot of people would say was not suited for a king uh, that he was ridiculous and undignified but David didn't care worship for him was without limits it was something that he was offering to God out of his overflow of love and gratefulness, gratitude for the goodness of God. Nothing could stop him, not even his wife, who thought he was looking a little bit ridiculous. How amazing would it be to, to experience that kind of freedom and that kind of joy in our worship, to worship God without reservation, without limit, without a care in the world, except to acknowledge God for who he is and what he has done to give him everything that we have to give in worship. Have you ever experienced that kind of worship or that kind of gratitude? What kind of thing holds you back from ex that expression of faith and worship? Would you like to be able to worship like that in public? Do you want to worship him like that in private? Have you ever worshipped him like that in private? We all come from different perspectives and different backgrounds, and the way that we worship is often influenced by the people that we've seen worship before us, especially as we were young in the faith. And that might be a circumstance where you grew up in the church and so you've adopted uh, a perspective on worship that was more akin to the way that your parents worshiped. Or maybe you only came to faith recently and you were in a really charismatic church environment and so you have a lot more of that kind of expressive style of worship. Or maybe you fall somewhere in between. We all have different stories. But we should all be endeavoring to grow in our worship. So we are going to try over the next several months, potentially, uh, putting together these short form videos where we challenge you to move outside of your comfort zone and try something new in your worship of God. That might mean for you it's just beginning to lift your hands a little bit, or, or maybe all the way up, or maybe it's just one hand at a time. And, and for others of you, that might be falling down on your knees in a profound moment of worshiping God, uh, maybe even lying prostrate. Uh, and, and for even others of you, it might be the ultimate expression to just let loose and dance in a particular jubilant song. Um, whatever that is, we are going to explore over the series of several videos spaced a couple of weeks apart. Uh, some of these different attitudes and expressions of worship. And so I wanted to let you know uh, what's going to be coming as we go, and maybe we can someday get a little bit closer to experiencing the same kind of freedom, joy, and undignified worship that David showed us. Thanks. Bye-bye.